How are we doing everyone and welcome to another edition of FSI's PGA DFS Breakdown. I'm your host TK Nation 47 bringing to you the showdown round two uh, DraftKings slate breakdown for the Northern Trust. This is the first playoff event for the PGA Tour uh, to win the FedEx Cup. Uh, it's been a very fun season full of a lots of uh, a lot of ups and downs and big showdown wins, big showdown losses, big classic wins, big classic losses, and that's how it typically glo- goes in DFS. Uh, but that is neither here nor there. We are talking showdown for the specific slate of the Northern Trust for round two. Uh, let's get into that with the picks. Uh, we're, here we go up top. We have John Rahm at 10-6, Colin Morikawa at 10-4, Jordan Spieth 10-2, Xander Shoffley at 10-K. Uh, John Rahm, the big, 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 uh, the big head honcho heading into round two with 4.2 strokes gain on the approach, 5.8 ball striking, 6.8 tee to green. Uh, John Rahm displaying what makes him the um, best golfer in the world right now, uh, winner of the U.S. Open. Open, you know, he did, was dominating Memorial before you know the COVID news hit. Uh, so John Rahm is well rested, ready to dominate the playoffs. Has the most strokes game, uh, strokes under par in the playoff in the last two years. Uh, just just mashing uh, courses on the playoff events. I, c- I could see him continuing to do so heading into round two. I think he should be a focal point in lineups. Um, yeah, he's going to get a nice little morning tea time too. So John Rahm uh, loaded up. Uh, Kyle Morikawa struggled with that putter today. Um, he struggled with much of everything. Um, ball striking was just not there, so I am off him. Speeth kind of looked lackadaisical as well around the greens and with his ball striking. Uh, you know, the approach wasn't terrible, but he could not get off the tee. Um, I don't know if that had anything to do with the wind or not, but Jordan Speeth, um, it's going to be a fade as well. And lastly, DJ. Uh, I don't mind DJ. He's actually in an interesting spur. Xander Shoffley, sorry, 10K. Xander, um, not really a good round two golfer. Big guy. Loves to get off to a good start. Didn't really do so. You know, he didn't really play well at uh, the FedEx St. Jude since his Olympic win. I'm just wondering where his head lies, but I could see Xander Shoffley making a good push in round two heading into the weekend at 10K. I don't think there's any point. I think the real play is John Rahm in this, and that's where I'm going to leave it. DJ, who I was going to talk about, I think is in a good spot at 9-7. DJ was playing really well. He just couldn't chip. Uh, His putting was really well, couldn't ball strike. He's kind of been much of his MO lately where one thing is together, but the rest kind of isn't. So I'm not sure DJ um, is going to be there altogether, but I think he can still put up good numbers with the way he's hitting the ball. Uh, So I I don't mind him. Uh, Next up we have, I go down the list here, uh, my favorite pick in this 9K range is going to be uh, Bryson DeChambeau at 9,300. I'm not really a big Bryson guy, but when Bryson has nine birdies, <laughs> I'm going to have some exposure to him the next day. Uh, 2.7 strokes gain on the approach, 3.3 ball striking. Just couldn't chip and putt. Um, well, his putter wasn't terrible. He couldn't chip. That's really what he's been uh, struggling with lately is that around the green game, and I know that's really vital here, and that's why he didn't score well um, as far as under or over par. He was, you know, he had nine birdies and just a lot of bogeys as well. So uh, give me Bryson uh, for a cheaper price and a guy that's hitting the ball really well. Next up is Justin Thomas at 8,900. 4.6 on the approach, 6.2 ball striking, 2.5 with the putter. You know, everyone kind of struggled around the green. That was the story of the day, but 8.3 strokes gain total. I think Rom and JT are chalk tomorrow. I think those are cash options going into the slate. And then just a little quick recap of the 9K, 10K. Xander, DJ, Bryson would probably be my favorite place to rally that out um, as far as GPP pivots off of Rom and JT. Uh, next up, we're going to keep going down the list here in the 8K range. Uh, I don't mind Patrick Cantley at 8.5. 
Uh, Paul Casey, not a bad option. I think 88 is a little steep. I think you're just going to want to play JT instead. But Patrick Cantlay at 85. Let's look at his numbers today. 2.2 around the green. He gained strokes while everybody was struggled around the green. His ball striking wasn't terrible. 3.3 T to green. You know, he didn't lose strokes with the putter either. I think Cantlay's in a boom spot. I think he continues to climb the leaderboard. Scored six or something birdie, six or seven birdies on the day. Uh, I do like Patrick Cantlay. Tomorrow, 8500 Nice little discount price. I think you could build really solid lineups with Rom, JT, Cantlay, and uh, even have some room to build and grow in that 7K range. Next up, we have Cam Smith at 8200 I really like him. I spoke about him a pre-tournament. Um, in our pick show this week about how I think he was um, going to really smash this event. I hope he can go super low tomorrow. I'm thinking about throwing an outright on him. I think that might be interesting. Um, let's see what we can do here. Cam Smith, uh, you know, keep scoring birdies, buddy. I think you got so, a big round in you this week. Adam Scott's been playing really well. He's 8K. Hideki, 81. I don't mind them too. Um, Hideki didn't really lose strokes across the board. He didn't really gain strokes across the board. The putter was there for Hideki, and that's always awesome to see. Similar stuff with Adam Scott. He did gain 1.4 on the approach. Um, that was better than Hideki. And just below Adam Scott, you have Tony Finau. Uh, Tony Finau, much like Scott, gained two strokes on the approach, even gained strokes with his putter. 2.9 T to green. I think those three plays are pretty solid. If I had to pick one, I'm going to go with Tony Finau. Next up we have, as we drop into this 7K range, uh, I like Johnny Vegas at 77. I think he can have a big day. Russell Henley's been a really good ball striker at 76. Cam Tringali at 75. Uh, Cam Tringali a uh, guy we were on pre-tournament is a uh, value play, 2.4 on the approach, 2.1 uh, with the putter. That's really good, 2.2 tee to green. Uh, a keep going, Cam Tringali. I think we're going to have you in as our uh, a lineup lock for us in cash. Uh, tomorrow, next up we have, um, as we climb down the ranks here, um, uh, Carlos Ortiz, I played him. He was sub six, uh, seven k on the on the main slate. Now we're getting a little price boost here, but you know the ball striking numbers have been really fantastic lately. Uh, he did gain one point four strokes around the around the greens, um, so I, I consider him to be a fairly good play. Kevin Na, not a bad play. I, I'm almost, I almost skipped him seventy or at seventy two hundred. Um, I like him as well. Uh, keep going down here as we creep into the 6K range. Harold Varner III um, finished T3 here in 2019 at the Northern Trust at Liberty National. He's 6,900. He jumped out to a nice 5-under par uh, round. Uh, usually Harold Varner goes backwards from here. So he's going to be on my fade list. And I'm going to be playing uh, a little bit of Cameron Champ at 6,900. Uh, Champ looks like a good course fit here. He's gaining strokes off the approach and with this putter. I don't mind um, the Magic Beans, Mac Hughes either. And, um, you know, Eric Van Royen has been really playing well. He is 6,800. If we want to drop down here and get into some bombs, Joel Dahman was cruising. He had he was like 4 under, 5 under, um, through like 12, and then he went double bogey bogey. And he kind of just threw himself out. You, you eliminate those three holes. Everybody's lining up to play him at 6,600. I am not going to miss out on this price tag. Joel Dahman won his matchup with uh, Harry Higgs, um, or with Phil Mickelson against Keith Mitchell and Harry Higgs Tuesday at Liberty National. They were telling us that he was playing fantastic. I played him in classic. That that translated over into this first round. He just had three bad holes, and then he bounced back a little bit. I think Joel Dahman is going to be a really good play for the next couple of days. I'll hope to see him continue to do well. Uh, other than that, guys, that's probably going to wrap things up for the showdown round two. Um, oh, maybe Keith Mitchell at 63. Uh, that's not a terrible play. You know, these guys got the competitive juices flowing early. And eh, Robert Streb, no thanks. Thomas Hogue was cruising as well. Oh, Harry Higgs, 6K. All right, that's not a terrible play. All right, that'll wrap things up for showdown round two. Uh, for the, the Northern Trust, 
please like this video, comment below, follow us on Twitter at FSIDFS.com or at FSIDFS. You could log in to our website at FSI or www.FSIDFS.com and you can find all of the, you know, the previous cores, all of our subscription plans, everything you need from a content standpoint from us here at FSI. I am the host, TK Nation 47 Been a while since I've been on the showdown round uh, videos, but uh, I'm looking forward to the next couple of weeks. Close up PGA, and let's get rolling into some football. All right, guys, have a good evening, and um, enjoy your morning, and let's go.